Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And here we are again, folks. I'm John Ray. We're uh, at North Fulton Business Radio and coming to you from, well, yes, still our virtual uh, Business Radio X studio. We're not in Renaissance Bank at the moment, but we're looking forward to being back there uh, one of these days here soon. Uh, in the meantime, Renaissance Bank remains uh, the place to go if you're a small business looking for more personal service. And boy, we've uh, had small businesses looking for that lately. Uh, and uh, if you're interested in that, uh, get in touch with your local Renaissance banker. You cannot go into the branch unannounced, but you can make an appointment and they'll be glad to see you. Um, or you can go through the drive through at any time. Uh, Renaissance Bank, renaissancebank.com is the website, but check them out. Uh, Renaissance Bank, understanding you member FDIC. And now we turn to Jennifer Finkelstein Hall. Jennifer is with Match Key Consulting. Jennifer, welcome. Glad to have you. Thank you so much, John. I appreciate being asked and I look forward to having some good discussion. Yeah, looking forward to uh, hearing about you and what you're up to with uh, Match Key Consulting. Why don't you let everyone know how you serve the market out there? Perfect. So Match Key is a training and professional development organization, and we really focus on helping our clients uh, and their teams, if they have a sales team, increase confidence around selling and telling their story and empowering women as well in the marketplace. So it's primarily, you know, building confidence, and that is, in my opinion, the most important skill set uh, to be successful in any business transaction. I am shocked to hear that people don't have confidence when it comes to sales. Um, I'm being, <laughs> I'm being facetious. You are being facetious, I assume, right? <laughs> no, I'm seriously. I mean, I think that's, you know, some people would rather run around naked in the streets than have to sell. Isn't that the truth? I mean, and, and, uh, yes. so you're addressing a really big problem that a lot of folks have. And, um, I mean, how, t talk a little bit about where that discomfort comes from. Maybe, I mean, maybe that's a way for us to to dig into this to begin with? Great. Well, it's a great question. Um, and I think most people, they associate sales with a bad salesperson experience or mm. memory. And so they immediately think, oh, well, I do not want to be that way um, or I don't ever want to experience that again. So I am never going into sales. And what I tell people, you know, that's kind of like having a bad teacher. You know, if you have one bad teacher, not all teachers are bad. Mm. So you pick and choose almost like having a bad manager. You pick and choose what you like. So what I usually tell people um, is, you know, what is it that's making them uncomfortable? Mm -hmm. Is it that they don't want to be pushy? They don't want to um, be rejected? Um they don't want to say certain things or they don't want to read from a script. And so then I say, well, then don't do that. You know, let's come up with your style and your personality and where you may be comfortable telling your story and let's go that route. And all of a sudden it's, oh, so I don't have to cold call to be a good salesperson and build relationships. So you know, long answer, but I do think that it's really undoing this image of whatever they have in their mind from from what a salesperson has looked like to them. And a lot of folks that are not comfortable think that sales is like quote unquote hard selling, right? I mean, it's that it's 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 all about uh, being very pushy and and uh, that kind of mm -hmm. thing. And that's not what you teach. That, that's exactly right. I mean, the basis of everything that we teach is that people are going to do business with people they like and they trust and they have a relationship with, period. It doesn't matter 
where you went to school or, um, you know, just all kinds of irrelevant things. If you cannot connect with someone and make them feel comfortable, then you will not win. Hmm. And when people think of themselves on the other side of that conversation, they completely understand it because that's how they buy. Sure. So, you know, you don't, you don't want to be pushy. You don't want to be reading, you know, or memorizing your, your spiel or whatever. You just want to talk to somebody. And so what we do is help them figure out how to tap the passion about what they're doing or what, what they're selling or, or whatnot, and then really help them figure out how to just talk and make people feel comfortable. It makes a big difference. Uh, for sure. Now, is this a function of the, uh, the old introvert extrovert dichotomy we hear about? I mean, or maybe another way to ask the question is, can can an introvert be a successful salesperson? I absolutely say yes. Um, I think most of us are introverts. Um, this would be shocking to anybody that knows me, but I would consider myself an introvert. And I think when we stop trying to fit the mold of what we think sales is supposed to be, which is uncomfortable on all sides of the, of the conversation. And instead we pull from what we are passionate about and what we're doing and how we're helping the community or we're delivering a service that's making a difference. Or, you know, we have a product that can really help solve someone's need. It's really not selling it's having a conversation mm. and it's having that passion come through. And just like anything, sometimes it's going to click with someone and sometimes it's not. And um, so I, I believe the more that people rethink their strategy, it, it really calls towards that introvert um, part of all of us. And it makes us feel a lot less pushy and, aggravating and annoying and, and, um, and fake. So I, I think, uh, I, I think absolutely introverts can be successful. It takes intentionality and it takes strategy. You know, you can't wing it and, mm. and winging it is what a lot of people do. And I, and I think that's what leads to some of the fear is because they're just kind of, you know, floundering. Right. Right. Um, Folks, this is North Fulton Business Radio, and if you just joined us, we're speaking with Jennifer Finkelstein Hall. Jennifer Hall, she's with Match Key Consulting. She's the founder of Match Key Consulting. Um, Jennifer, one issue for anyone in sales is objections and getting rejected, mm. feeling rejected, maybe, and maybe sometimes taking that. Yeah. Um, uh, more personally, the, you know, that's more personal than really people intended. It's more about the product or service than it is the person. But sometimes people internalize that, right? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, if I sat here and said, oh, it's not you, it's the product, you know, we've all heard that, but it is really hard to change being human. <laughs> yeah. And so really what I, uh, what, what I, talk to clients about, number one, uh, it kind of goes back to what I'd mentioned earlier, is, is you can't wing it. You need to assume that you'll be rejected. Mm. Um, I call rejection redirection. And it's, it's the same as an objection, not necessarily being you know rejected, but having an objection come up um, when you are talking with someone about a service or a product. When, when those things come back to us, we typically act like we had no idea that was coming. And that to me is what generates the fear. The fear is the unknown. He's going to, or she's going to ask me something. I don't know the answer or, or he or she is not going to like what I'm selling or not like me. So the key uh, strategy, I guess, that I would really say is you must be ready. 
So let's talk about objections first and then get to rejection. Mm -hmm. So most of the time, there are probably five to seven typical objections that you will hear from your prospects and clients. Think about what those are. You know, is it price? Is it a competitor in the marketplace? Is it, you know, they had a previously uh, previous bad experience? Um, you know, whatever it is, and, and people can easily write that down because they hear those all the time. Mm -hmm. And then they need to prepare. How do you respond to that? So when someone says, gosh, you know, the price doesn't seem to match the value you're providing. Don't look at that person or freeze and say, oh, my gosh, I had no idea that would even come up. What am I going to say now? Um, instead, you're prepared but before you pounce and try to defend, you know, I, I had taken some courses certainly in my 27 year career and I had a wonderful um, process explained to me once, which was when an objection comes or a rejection comes, come up with an acknowledgement statement first. So I understand this may not be the right fit for you. Tell me more about what's holding you back, for example. So, so that is a little skill. That is asking an open-ended question after providing an acknowledgement statement. Mm. So if everybody hangs up now, what I would hope they walk away with is write down the five typical objections. What could an acknowledgement statement be and what open-ended questions. So now let's get to rejection. So rejection is the same thing. So what would you say when someone says, I'm not interested? Come up with some acknowledging statements. Well, I appreciate the candor. Is it the product itself or is this bad timing? You know, tell, tell me more so that I capture your thoughts. And an open-ended question I think is great when people are given a no is, do you mind if I follow up with you in six months and just touch base and see if you're still happy with your current provider? Mm -hmm. Most people are not going to say, no, I never want to hear from you again. You're, you're an awful salesperson. Go away. <laughs> <laughs> right. If they do, don't call them back in six months. Sure. Okay? Right. But that That is a, a, a tool or a trick that when you are getting rejected, that you end on a conversational exchange and mm -hmm. then you do take it less personally. Of course, you have to always know it's not you, it's, it's the product and service. But I think when you end one of these conversations and your heart's not racing and you don't feel like you're, you know, you've just been um, um, verbally abused. I think rejection does become more redirection than it, than it currently is perceived. So, Jennifer, what is the, uh, I guess I want to uh, shift gears for just a second because this is uh, really great information. And, and I'd like to maybe circle back around to you briefly. And I'd love it if you'd give a little bit of your history and uh, your your journey, and uh, what what brought you around to starting uh, Match Key Consulting? Well, thank you, John, for giving me that, uh, that chance. Um, you know, my journey. I was in corporate America in Atlanta for twenty seven years. Um, I graduated from Emory. I got a finance degree. Went into banking, which is what I was supposed to do. I was told, and um, and during most of my career, I was a relationship manager. So I, I banked companies. I handled, I worked with business owners all the time. And two things kind of happened during my career that, that made me um, really start thinking about Match Key's concept and then starting the company three years ago. First of all, you know, I was successful as a salesperson, but I was, not comfortable as a salesperson and, and not comfortable as, and I have my little quotes right now in the air, you know, what a salesperson is supposed to be. And so I just started to talk to business owners 
And I would ask questions and I would tell them who I was and I would listen. And, and I realized over the first 22 years of my career um, at, at one bank in particular, that I was connecting with these business owners. And so I was not selling, I was conversing. And I realized that that was easy for me. The selling scared me. So I wanted to help everyone else that was in that role that was struggling with meeting sales goals. I wanted to really help them understand that their approach may not be working for them because they're trying to be a salesperson as opposed to conversational and building a relationship and and trying to solve problems. Mm. The other thing that happened during my 27 years is I was very fortunate to be a female in a, in a fairly high position. And I mentored scores and scores of, of younger women as they came into the company. And after a while, I realized I was telling them all the same thing about how to be more confident and, and how to manage some of the tendencies that, that we have as women. And so when I left the industry and, and I was a sales director in one of the banks and I also managed a commercial training program for one of those banks. So I fell in love with helping the next generation of leaders. So tying all those things together, when I left the industry, I thought I want to help people that are not that don't have access to training that's helping them through those exact things. I saw fewer and fewer training programs happening in corporate America than when I was starting my career. And I saw especially millennials be really criticized for behaviors that no one had really taught them. And so Match Key was a solution to that. So I was able to, uh, which is why millennials is one of our our, our true targets, um, our, our true segments right now, is that there's a lot of brilliant, brilliant pr- um, professionals that have not had any of this kind of training. They're given a, um, a, a wonderful job opportunity. They do a super job. They get sales goals, and they don't know what to do. And they don't necessarily, of course, this is a generalization, they don't necessarily have resources in the company that they work for. And so they get frustrated, they quit, they go find another job. Mm. We want to help those people be successful. And the skills that I just identified that I saw through my career are the skills that I really didn't see being offered uh, to the millennials. And then of course the female route was the same thing. Um, so that's, you know, it's a long answer, but that's really explaining what I experienced and, and where my passion was and what match keys mission is. And it is to really help build the confidence. Like we started out our call talking about helping people build confidence and providing some intentionality around activities, behavior, and helping people succeed. Jennifer, what? How do you work with folks? Um, do you work with with companies? Do you work with individuals, or or both? Uh, to, to talk a little bit about your engagements. Sure. Well, prior to COVID. We were doing a lot of in-person workshops, and we're still doing those virtually. However, because a lot of people have found themselves in positions where they have to sell or, um, or, or articulate their value proposition, and they're not really used to that, um, we're also doing a lot of one-on-one virtual um, you know, c- training, coaching, um, consulting, whatever you want to call it. Um, but we're really, during COVID, we really found a need to help people work through a lot of the issues that we're talking about. Mm. Um, even, you know, how to tell your value proposition, you know, when you go on an interview. 
because a lot of folks have not been interviewed in many, many years. So, um, so MatchKey is still offering um, facilitated workshops, virtual and in person. We do also provide one-on-one or small team um, development discussions. And one service that did come out of COVID was we are now helping companies find the right training partner or facilitator if it's not something that MatchKey provides. And being in, you know, Atlanta for 30 years um, and having a great network and and hopefully a, a good reputation, people will call me and have called me over the last few months and said, hey, do you do onboarding? Do you do customer service? Do you do change management? Um, how about pivoting? How about marketing? Well, I don't do all of those things, mm. but we have a wonderful network that does. So, so that's another service that is fairly new um, is that we help people find what they need, whether, uh, you know, whether we provide it or not, we are a trusted resource and we stand behind all those connections, of course. Folks, you're listening to Jennifer Finkelstein Hall, and she is the founder of MatchKey Consulting. Um, millennials, let's talk about millennials, and and I'm, I really want to talk about millennials uh, to maybe help educate the non millennials, particularly the ones that look down on millennials, which I get kind of tired of. So, t- talk about um, uh, your work with millennials. What what you find from that that's a key segment for match key what 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 your learning is from that and how you can help managers that are managing millennials sure sure there are a couple of things um first i'll i'll talk about the actual skill set the soft skills the training and then then i'll talk about some of the millennial specific programs so like you said, I, I really have been discouraged and, and um, you know, I feel, I feel poorly when I see a young person. And of course, I'm in my 50s. So when I talk about millennials, I'm talking about people that are um, under the age of 40 or, you know, born between pretty much 1980 and 1998 or whatever. Um, but um, what I would realize is that they would be criticized because, uh, and I quote, people would say, well, they should know that, end quote. And so I would then ask, well, how would they have learned that? You know, and that could be, you know, they don't feel comfortable going into a room and and networking. Um, And after doing a lot of of dialogue with both millennials and the, the leaders of millennials, I came to the conclusion that they were being held to uh, a standard of of skill set that no one has provided to them. And again, this is a generalization. So I took it as a personal mission that I wanted them to have access to that training, just like I had access to it. And just like a lot of the leaders that uh, grew up in, in corporate or in business, in entrepreneurship, um, they didn't know a lot of these things when they started. Someone was there to mentor them or to help them with training or to develop them. And unfortunately, that just doesn't exist as much as it used to. So I started to talk with the managers and I asked them, you know, how are you helping them with this skill? And after getting kind of some blank stares, I started developing programs Mm -hmm. and at the end of the day, I would really say to people that, you know, if somebody is lazy, it's because they're lazy. (laughs) It's not because they're a millennial or they're a baby boomer or they're, you know, a gen X it's because they're lazy Mm. and, you know, stereotyping any group is ridiculous. So I want to empower the management team to provide the skills necessary to help succeed. And on the flip side, the the millennials themselves are brilliant. 
there's so much that they are bringing that they could bring to a company in creativity and certainly in in digital media in reaching an audience um, or a target market that someone in their 50s cannot really connect with. And so I work very hard on helping the millennials have a voice in those companies. And so, as you can see, I'm, I'm very passionate about that. Now, as far as workshops, I have a wonderful, I have a couple of wonderful um, affiliated partners of Match Key that have written books on generational differences, um, on millennials in particular, and actually lead programs to uh, leadership teams of companies on how can you bring millennials into the fold, um, <clears throat> what types of conversations can you have. Uh, they educate the leaders on all the different generations and where people come from and where they excel compared to you know, another generation or what skill sets they're real confident in and what they aren't. And it's really provided some great dialogue to to bring teams together of all generations and less of them versus us. So millennials are, are a very near and dear part of of our company. And I know that just by having the conversation and helping both sides of that equation on the generational gap, everybody's going to win. And it's going to be a, a, a wonderful way to develop the future leaders of, of our companies. Yeah, that sounds, uh, that sounds awesome. And, and you, you make such a great point about the disconnect being really, um, understandable it, it, that, that if the lack of training that millennials have coming through, um, shows up in, um, a lot of areas and a lot of places that uh, older folks, more experienced folks, uh, criticize. And there's a really good reason for some of what they see, the deficiencies that they think they see. Um, there's, there's a real good reason for that. Um, I want to shift gears. And on the flip side, I'll say, John, on yeah, the flip please. side, I also, um, the millennials also see those deficiencies in the other generations. Mm. So again, it's really important um, to have the dialogue because it gives both sides a chance to really understand, um, you know, again, what, what their strengths and comfort is and isn't because there's deficiencies everywhere. Um, so it's important that it's, it's being discussed in all directions. Sure. Absolutely. I want to shift gears uh, here a second because you've got some um, important things to say about folks. Unfortunately, there's a lot more of them right now that are now looking for a new job uh, when they weren't expecting to just a few months ago. Uh, maybe they're interviewing for the first time in a while. And, and, and you've got some some important things to say to folks like this to feel more empowered with that process. Sure, sure. Um the fear, I think, in any of these experiences um, is the fear of the unknown. So what I always tell people, and I have a lot in the last several months, is mm -hmm. turn the unknown into a known. Plan for what you feel you don't understand. So, for example, when it comes to interviewing, before you go into the interview, put yourself in the person's shoes and really think about what are the qualities that they are looking for to complete that job? And you'll know what those are. Um, it could be, you know, qualifications, reliability, you know, whatever it is. And during the interview, it's very important to illustrate how you can provide what's needed and what it is going to mean to that company. There's uh, a phrase that we use a lot in some of our programs called WIFM, W-I-I-F-M. It's not a radio station. <laughs> um, and, and many people know of it, but it stands for what's in it for me. Sure. 
And I think um, if I was to say, you know, if I was to tell somebody a couple of, you know, just basic ideas as they're going into an interview is do a little homework and really understand what are the qualifications of a person that they would want to hire mm -hmm. and figure out a way to answer their with them. Tell them, you know, in this role, I know it's important that you have someone that is able to do A, B, C, and D. I have done A, B, C, and D. And what that means to your company is that you would not need to spend time training me on how to do it. You would be educating me on how your company handles a certain, um, you know, delivery service or whatnot. All of a sudden, the person that's interviewing, they're like, oh, so I get now how hiring you is going to help me. It sounds kind of obvious, but I think a lot of times people just go into an interview and they just want to talk about all the things that they've done. Mm -hmm. And here's my resume and here are all the things, you know, but they don't really let the person who's interviewing understand what that's going to mean to them. Right. You know, if it means that you're not going to have to train me, it means that I could manage people. I could help take some of the burden off of you. I can work remotely. I, you know, whatever that is. So that really would be um, what I would suggest and what, and what I have suggested over the last few months. Um, make the person understand why you are going to help them and be the best fit and talk. Mm -hmm. Just talk about. You know, I'm big on passion, as you can tell. Uh, I think the more the, the passion comes through in an interview about what's important to you and how you how you treat coworkers or, or how you act in the marketplace or, you know, um, your discipline, your um, your demeanor, those those are the things people really want to understand, not just that you worked somewhere for seven years and you did these five things. Hmm but that you take pride in your work and that you encourage team members to, to, you know, level, to raise their level of, of participation or whatever it is. The, those are the things that will stand out. Jennifer, this has been great. Uh, I know that there are a lot of folks that could benefit from uh, working with you, uh, uh, learning from you, uh, so let's get them in touch with you. Uh, why don't you give folks uh, your contact information? Uh, where, where, how's the best way that they can connect with you? Perfect. Well, the best way is to email me, and that email address is jennifer at matchkeyconsulting.com. Our website is matchkeyconsulting.com, so www.matchkeyconsulting.com. And my direct line uh, is 404-308-7658. We're all kind of on our cells now. So that that would really be the best way. And, and I also just want to mention, if there is a situation someone is dealing with right now and they just want somebody to bounce an idea off of for a few minutes, please don't hesitate to reach out. I, I do that every day, and right now it's really not just about, you know, um, generating business. It's more about helping each other get back to work and get that cash flow coming back in and, and grow our economy. And any way I can be helpful, be my pleasure. Jennifer Finkelstein Hall, she is uh, with Match Key Consulting. Jennifer, this has been great. Thank you so much. Thank you, John, for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Folks, if you need some help that involve uh, headaches, and those headaches involve administrative tasks in your business, um, your books are a mess, you need a presentation prepared, if you've got some of those problems or maybe or more, well, I've got an answer that involves picking up the phone and calling Chief Executive Angel, S.E.S. Cabido at Office Angels, 770-442-9246. Um, they've been virtual for 18 years since their founding, so they have no problem uh, flying in virtually, uh, taking care of your problem, and flying out. And uh, the SE has a whole team of angels who have talent and experience in a variety of areas. So whatever your problem is, 
um, in that regard, pick up the phone, give SE a call, or go to officeangels.us. Seven, or uh, again, the number is 770-442-9246. Uh, just a reminder on uh, Closer to Home here for North Fulton Business Radio, you can find this show every uh, on all the major podcast apps, I should say, Apple Podcasts, Google Stitcher, TuneIn, Spotify, iHeartRadio. I could keep going, but folks, we're on all the major podcast apps, or you can go to NorthFultonBusinessRadio.com and find us there. We've got a whole archive of shows there as well, but we would love it if you would uh, subscribe to us on your favorite app, review, give us a review, and uh, it helps uh, folks out there that need to hear uh, business leaders that we feature on this show, like Jennifer. Uh, It helps folks, folks find the show uh, so that we can be uh, helpful and spread the good word about what folks like Jennifer are doing. Um, you can also find us on your uh, uh, favorite uh, social media platform, LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, and Twitter. On all three of those, we're at North Fulton BRX. So for my guest, uh, Jennifer Finkelstein Hall, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.